spin numbers are more important than any new driver technology that will come out in the next 10 years. And here's exactly why. Welcome back to a brand new video, Simon down here at Burford Golf Lab and if you didn't see yesterday's video, I built a great combination of driver, reg flex shaft with a 5 degree low spin head, went an absolute mile. However, if you don't have a 125 plus club head speed, what driver combination should you be looking for? And that brings me neatly on to my bargain review series where I buy old equipment, eBay, Facebook, and then give it away to you guys at the end of the video. So, if by the end of this video you think this driver is going to be suited to your swing, leave this video a like, leave it a comment, and subscribe. Now, this cost me £30. No adjustable weights. Someone decided that lead tape on the back of the head was a good idea. Not quite sure what they were going, well, I know why they put it there, and I'll explain that in a minute. Reg flex shaft in the head. Now, obviously yesterday's video, I built the driver for my swing and it produced great numbers and I kept talking about launch and spin. And one of you commented, what would it be a good combination for like a 95 mile an hour swing? And I'm gonna do one better than that. I'm gonna swing as fast as it's needed until I know this is producing great numbers. Therefore, I can then advise someone that's watching this video if this driver would be good for them. And I said at the start, backspin is more important than any technological advancement out there. So if I had a G410 head, or if I had a M5 head, or an Epic Flash, whatever it is, but it's set at 11 degrees with a reg flex shaft in it, I might have great ball speed numbers. However, as soon as that thing starts spinning above 3000, and I will make this clear in a minute, but spinning above 3000, I'm just losing distance. It goes great for the first 100 yards and then takes off like a jet. On the alternative side, if you're not keeping up in the air long enough, i.e. your spin numbers are too low because the heads nowadays are produced to create that low spin effect, you're hitting the ground too early. Therefore, you're losing distance. And it's getting that right combination of the two to give you that optimal drive, whether it's a 50 pound driver or a 450 pound driver. But Simon, you're a club fitter. Why are you saying all of this? Well, at the end of the day, new stuff is easy to club fit into. I've got multiple shafts, I've got multiple heads, and when you walk out that door, I can tell you wholeheartedly that that driver is perfect for your golf game. Now, you can go down the second-hand route, and ironically, the more you've played this game, the more of an idea you have of what head combination and shaft works for you, whereas if you're a beginner and you probably need that advice more, you have no idea. So hopefully after this episode, you'll have some idea on what to look for for your golf game. So prediction times. I'm gonna absolutely nut this. I'm gonna hit as hard as I can as a playing swing. Hopefully get to the high 170, no, let's go 170 ball speed. It's early in the day. Um, and it's gonna spin a lot. I don't know how much, but I imagine it's gonna spin a lot, which means that it's gonna come down so high. So all of a sudden it's gonna take off and basically come down. And if you're one of these people that hit a long ball, but basically get no run out, your driver spins too much. You don't need a simulator to know that. Basically, if you get no run, your driver spins too much. It should be hitting the ground and still bounding on a good extra 15 to 20%. So that's my prediction. This thing is gonna go into the stratosphere and then come down. What I'm then gonna do is basically hit it until I get that right combination of ball speed to give me that 2,000 to 2,500 revs of backspin with good launch numbers like 12 to 14, and then let's see what distance that produces. Now, I'm hoping it's gonna go at least 200 yards, um, but what I want you to notice throughout this video is that my first swings are gonna have 40 to 50 times miles an hour more ball speed than the slower swing, yet that difference in total distance is gonna be very close. Hope this is all making sense. Let's get into hitting a few, I'll explain more. Right, three swings hit pretty hard, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> wow, that is right. Okay, I think that makes total sense. Okay, the last one was leaked just a tad to the right. How far offline was I? 63 yards, impressive. Okay, so for your first few swings of the day, we're in the 160s, high 160s, and you can see the spin rate up in the high 4000s. The first two were half decent hits. But they were going so high, not because of the launch. I mean, the launch was, yes, it was high at 16, 15 degrees, but the spin rate was just so high. And if you watched yesterday's video, I was hitting drives 340, 350 with very similar ball speeds. And this is really what I want you to understand today, is that ball speed always has an optimal shaft and head combination. And you want that golden 2500 to 2200 backspin. Otherwise, it's hitting the ground too early or going too high. So, I got 246 carry, 255 carry, going about average, total distance 251. So, I want to swing slow now. And I'm going to play about with it. I'm going to try and find the ultimate combination and we'll look at the numbers. I'm going to try and drop the ball speed by at least 40. So let's go down to the 120s. Club head speed then is going to be roughly around the 80 mile an hour mark. But hopefully, because the numbers are more optimal, the ball should only be slightly behind the big hit that I did there. And there is someone out in the world, or quite a few of you, that's going to love this combination because you don't get it up in the air for long enough. There's going to be some of you that this would be rubbish for. So that's why I want to, before anyone comments, likes and wants this driver, I want to make it very clear that this is going to be good for you. Otherwise, it's a waste of time. Right, I'm going to slow it down. Let's see what kind of numbers and distances we can then produce. I'm really happy with that. Let's look at the numbers. Right, here's the challenge. I've got to make this sound interesting. The last drive I hit there, which is probably the optimum ball flight. Not too low, not too high. We look at the numbers. 112 ball speed, which was the lowest out of all of them, which is perfect. One, no, 14.2 on the launch angle, which again is perfect. Spin rate, 2,200. Now, my GC2 doesn't measure club head speed, but it does work it out in terms of smash factor of a driver, which is 1.45. So, I know now, if you have a club head speed of 75 to 80 miles an hour, this is perfect for you. Because if you swing it any faster, you're going to be losing control. It's going to go too high. It's going to balloon and go nowhere. You look at my max swings. I had some nearly one, well, I had 163, 167 ball speed, which is 55 miles an hour quicker, which essentially should be 100 yards difference. However, it was only about 50 yards difference because the spin rate was too high. And this is what I'm trying to get. Why, especially as a beginner golfer as well, if you go and get club fitted straight away when you start the game, that driver that you've bought, no matter how much money you spend on it and what technology, you make big changes to your game, you increase your club head speed, you increase your attack angle, whatever it might be, those numbers are going to change. Therefore, backspin is always king when it comes to driver fitting. Someone that has a 75 to 80 mile an hour club head speed is going to get great on with this. This is going to be a great driver, forgiving, no adjustable weights, high launching, everything else. Don't know if this actually does anything. If anyone swings faster than that, this driver is not necessarily useful, useless, but at the same time, not optimum. So, Simon, I swing faster than 80 miles an hour. What should I do? Well, you're gonna loft your driver down and you're also gonna get a stiffer shaft. That's gonna drop these numbers. If I hit a 167 ball speed with a driver, I expect 320, I expect 330, because on optimal numbers, and again, I can't reiterate this enough, 14 degrees launch, if your launch is too low, then it's not good enough, you need to work on your impact factors. And spin rate needs to be around 2200, 2500. That is gonna give you the most. That is why I gain people so much distance in a club fit. Not because of the technology, it's because all the new drivers come out with multiple shafts and multiple heads, which I can think and like change to then suit your golf game. As long as your swing is consistent. Got to remember, you hit it out the heel or the toe, your numbers are gonna be different. 
you hit it on the up or the down, your number's gonna be different. So if you've got an inconsistent swing, it's very difficult to club fit someone well and get an optimal driver that's gonna work all the time. Again, if you go and get a club fit and then have a series of lessons afterwards, by the end of those lessons, your driver not, might not be good enough for you. What this means is that there is a driver out there for everyone, whether it's second hand or new, whatever. The idea of this series is basically to give you more information and make more educated purchases so you don't waste money, but you also don't waste time. Don't just go, I need to get more loft because I saw an advert saying I need my loft. Do you need more loft? I made a driver yesterday, five degree head, reg flex shaft. Again, the ball came out perfect numbers. So does it matter what make? Does it matter what brand? Does it matter what shaft? The ideal situation, regardless of that, is hopefully you get the numbers that I've just shown you now, and it means that the ball's gonna go further. Now, if you've got a driver that is perfect launch and perfect spin at the rate at the moment, and you're going, Simon, I wanna hit it further, well, you're gonna have to swing it faster. You're gonna have to go to the gym, you're gonna have to get more flexible, you're gonna have to work on uh, more things around your golf game to get that club head speed up. The irony of that is that as soon as you start swinging faster, that driver might not be as optimal. So if you gain another 10 miles an hour club head speed, so you do speed training, gym, nutrition, you gain that 10 miles an hour. You might need to then change driver, and it's fine margins. You saw between the numbers, it's very fine margins in golf. Therefore, you've got to take it with a pinch of salt. The more backspin, the more likely you're to find a fairway because the bad shots aren't going to be as bad. But at the same time, if you've got too little spin, it means that you're going to be hitting the ground too early. You might catch that one that goes absolute mile, but at the same time, your bad shots are going to be all over the place because the side spin just takes too much of an effect. So guys, I hope you found this video very useful. Hopefully, you have a bit more of an idea of how to find a driver that suits your game rather than just picking a brand or a manufacturer. If you like this video, leave it a like. If you want to win this, then obviously comment down below. Subscribe if you are new. Leave this video a like and I'll post it out to one of you. See you guys later.